Hello, I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this is Gondor Calls for Aid, where you can come and learn how to play Lord of the Rings board games better, I hope. Today we're talking about Journeys in Middle-Earth's Arwen. The likeness of Luthien revisited upon the land indeed. If you want him, come and claim him. Forgive me, Tolkien, for I have sinned, but I gotta say I absolutely love movie Arwen, way more than book Arwen. She is a boss, and I am here for it. Speaking of Arwen being a boss, she's one of the best heroes in the game, and she is the first hero from the Shadowed Paths expansion that we'll be covering. Her wisdom is her strength, and she ain't bad when it comes to her agility or spirit either. Her two weaker stats come in might and wit, but other than that, she's not messing around. Did we, did, 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 did we see what I did there? Her, her wit and messing around? It's okay. Arwen wouldn't think it was funny either with a wit score of two. If someone in your party rolls Arwen, everyone wins. Her unique ability is absolutely incredible at keeping heroes alive and unmolested from nasty face-up damage and fear cards. Speaking of damage and fear, Arwen has the typical elvish spread of 6 fear, 4 damage, and 5 inspiration. Whatever build you end up using, Arwen is a hero who can keep the party safe from untimely last stands as well as nasty face-up damage and fear cards. But that's enough introduction. After all, Knuckles for eight! And Board Game Schoolhouse. Well answer. Arwen's basic build is built around Herbalist, basically doubling down on her unique ability and making her a healer extraordinaire. Her suggested items, however, are terrible suggestions, and I honestly don't know what FFG was thinking. Normally I don't suggest changing any of the items or the armor in the basic builds if I can help it, but I can't not recommend using a wisdom-based weapon when she has a score of four. So anyway, go for the staff. Building it to Lone Land Staff and then Maranwe. For her armor, upgrade your starting cloak to Tuckborough Cloak, then Splendor Well, and finally Storm Shroud. In the herbalist role, your skill priority should be Phosphorescence, Healing Poultice, Natural Remedy, Calming Presence, Athelos, and Insight. This build will make you the best healer available in the game, and you can use the staff to crowd control enemies and support the party. Because Arwen's unique ability requires her to be in the same space as other heroes, this team player build packs her skill deck with other similar abilities. You're going to use the same weapons as the basic build, but for armor, you're going to switch it up, taking padded armor, upgrading that to Guard's Tabard, then Ever Vigilant, and finally Star of the West. The skill deck is pretty straightforward. You'll spend the whole adventure in the guide role, and we'll want to prioritize timely assistance, all together, teamwork, survival training, alert, and ancient trails. If for some reason the staff isn't doing it for you, the walking stick and horn are also great items for Arwen, and I'm gonna go over the details about how to upgrade those in the last build, which we'll be going over right now. As the name suggests, this independent woman build is all about Arwen taking care of business on her own. For her items, you want the walking stick, to trusted walking stick, to quick nick, and then cloud chaser. This will let you ignore difficult terrain when you're running around on your own. In your offhand, take Horn, upgrade it to Sentry's Horn, which if you're like me, you'll flip it to use half the time, and then take Ringing Glory. The Horn is going to help you generate inspiration if you're ever getting bogged down by enemies. For your armor, take Padded Armor, upgrade it to Guard's Tabard, and then Ever Vigilant. For your rolls and skill deck, start in Burglar in order to get quick thinking, then multi-class into Pathfinder, where you want to take Honed Instinct, Unstoppable, Find a Way, Ambush, and Trail Sign. If possible, keep cards with Sprint prepared so you can solo big skill checks by way of Unstoppable. This build is my favorite for Arwen, probably because it reminds me the most of the Arwen we see in the Fellowship film. Remember when you're playing Arwen to keep your eyes peeled for elven light and prepare it whenever possible. It can't be understated how powerful it is to be able to scout the top of your deck before you make a weapon attack or any darkness check or any other spirit or wisdom check throughout the course of the game. 
Also, remember it's usually not a good idea for Armin to go first in the action phase unless there's already some damage or fear for her to heal. And that's how you play Arwen better. If you have an alternative build that you like, I'd love to read about it in the comments. And if you'd like to reference these and other builds easily, there's a link for you in the description. If you like the video, please prove it and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. I'm Ben of Board Game Schoolhouse, and this has been Gondor Calls for Aid, Arwen. Remember, the shadow deepens, though hope yet endures. Get up!